is heavy. Who wants to wake up and not see their child come through the door or not hear from their child? Who wants to wake up and have to deal with it? No mother. So at the end of the day, we got to make a move. I'm a move. If I got to move by myself, I'm a move. Picture. Black male. Hey, there are white people chasing me. We reported on this from day one and said it's something absolutely wrong with this whole picture. Black male calls the police. He says, hey, there are white people chasing me. He then texts his mother. He says, mom, uh, my boss wants the, the guys who work for him to kill me. If something happens to me, just know what it is. All right. Young man is found dead. Head decapitated. Sheriff comes out immediately. Oh. No foul play. No foul play here. Uh, this had to be some kind of uh, animal uh, in the wild. We said on day one, hell to the no. There's something else going on here. Let's get it. He told me that it was three white trucks full of white men trying to harm him, trying to kill him. And um, I told him to go to the police station and everything. He did everything that I, you know, asked him to do. They told him he couldn't stay there. Um, he didn't stay there. He texted me after he left the police department, and he said that, um, Mom, if something, you know, he told me, we're not seeing eye to eye. My boss and I are not seeing eye to eye. eye, to eye. And then he put his boss name there and he put the company name there. And he told me uh, if something happened to him, his boss was, was responsible. And he said, Mama, I'm smart. He got these men trying to kill me. I told the sheriff, I said that, uh, he said, when I told him it was foul play, he said, no, uh, it's, 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 it's no foul play. So Rasheen Carter, a Fayetteville man went missing in October of 2022 in Taylorsville, Mississippi. Now, Rasheen Carter, he was trying to get his business back on the ground because due to the pandemic, his business as well as others were slowed down, if not come to a close. Now, Rasheen took a job working for Luke Clemens in Taylorsville, Mississippi. In doing so, his transportation went down on him. So in September, a co-worker had told him if he could get a ride to the hotel in Laurel, Mississippi, then he would give him a ride to the job site in Taylorsville, Mississippi. Rasheen Carter had a cousin to get him to the hotel in Laurel and for a few days rode to work with his co-workers until days before his disappearance when he and some co-workers and boss had some sort of disagreement. So around October 1st, he was left stranded in Taylorsville by his co-workers and he started informing his mother and family that he felt that his life was in danger. He told his mother that he was being chased by several trucks of white men that were threatening him and calling him numerous or racial slurs. Rasheen was instructed by his mother to go to the Taylorsville police station, in which he did. Now, Rasheen also in text message had told his mother that if anything happened to him, you know, that his boss would be the blame. That would be the go-to person. Now, According to now, they are saying that it's evidence proven that there's no way that his boss could have anything to do with it. And it's since been said that his boss and um, his family, Luke Clemens and his family, had went into hiding. So Rasheen went to the police department on October the 1st, informing the police that he was fearing for his life. And he was asking, could they give him a ride back to Laurel, Mississippi, to the hotel? He was turned away and denied a ride. And that night, no one sure about where exactly Rasheen may have slept. So again, on October the 2nd, he went back to the police department 
again informing him that he feared for his life and also asked could he borrow a phone charger. He also let them know that at this time he did have somebody that was coming to pick him up later on that day and he was again turned away. They did not give him a ride or charger or let him sit at the police department and wait for his ride. So Rasheem went to a local gas station like the day before and that day and he was trying to get a ride back to Laurel, Mississippi to the hotel. He offered to pay for the gas and, you know, for who's ever troubled that would give him a ride back to Laurel. But no luck. So on October the 2nd, after he had left the police department, he went into a Dollar General. Now, here's where they are saying that he just walked up and down the hall and, you know, seeming like he was hiding. And it's alleged that the cashier at the time that was behind the counter was on the phone with someone and said that, he was in there as if someone was asking, hey, you know, did the guy come in there? Uh, we think we saw the guy in there. I don't know. But this is alleged that the cashier had loudly said, yes, he's in there, which was supposed to be the reason why Rasheen left out of the store and went towards the left like he was going back to the Taylorsville police station. So once his ride made it to Taylorsville at the disclosed location that they agreed upon, there was no sign of Rasheen anywhere. The lady reached out to the family, letting them know that he wasn't there and no one claimed to have seen him. Rasheen's phone was dead, so nobody could call and contact him to see where he had went. So at this point, Rasheen had never been seen Again, about a month later, when parts of his remains were reported to the family and a late and later, a picture from a deer cam was also surfaced and the family got to see him shirtless in that picture. Looks like he was holding a big log and it seems that Rasheem had bruises along his side and his back as well which makes the family feel that Rasheem was in fact fearing for his life trying to get away this was in broad daylight and it was only that one picture that the family ever received so that brought about many questions like were there other cameras what were the other photos on there did any of the other photos show anyone chasing him why would he be running on someone's private property in a town that he's not familiar with without his shirt because when he left the dollar general he had on a shirt so by the time that this deer cam photo surfaced, he didn't have on a shirt. So why would he be running around shirtless, holding a log with bruises on his body? So this gave the family more questions than it did answers. So again, the first set of remains were found and... The family received them in somewhat of a small box. It contained a dismembered skull that had been decapitated from Rasheen's body and a few other bones. I want to say it was like a real part of the spine, but not too much. Only like 10, 12, 15 bones tops. So at this point, the police is still stick it to their story that no signs of foul play and that an uh, animal was more than likely to dismember this body like that this family was not buying that at all so the family decided to go to Taylorsville and do an investigative search where they quickly debunk the police telling them that during their investigation that they did not find any surveillance footage of any sort of regime and that, you know, when he left that police station, that they didn't ever see him again 
nowhere. But the family did, in fact, find footage of Rasheen on the Dollar General footage. And that's where they could see when he leaves out, he goes to the left in the direction towards the police department. So they assembled several searches and done protests, demanding answers and still no justice. So after the first set of remains were reported in November, a second set of remains was reported in February. And due to DNA testing, it came back as a match for Rasheen Carter. Later in April, there was a third set of Rasheen's remains reported. And here recently, over the last week or so in May, there was a fourth set of Rasheen's remains reported. And with set one through four, this family still has under 50 bones. So it's basically a whole body still out there somewhere. Because as we know, there is a little over 200 bones in the human body. Now, the crazy thing about it is, is where the first set of remains were in the deer cam picture, this come off of a property that was a relative to one of the polices in Taylorsville. So how did Rasheen's body make it way over there? Now this family since November has been fighting for justice, has been seeking answers on what happened to Rasheen Carter. So if there's anybody out there that knows anything, please contact this family because nobody is buying that no signs of foul play or that an animal done this. Now, experts said that in regards to the animal statement, that that is very well possible that due to the time that Rasheen was out there, that an animal could dismember the body. But if that's the case, then what kind of animals do Taylor Villa guys running around in broad daylight that's ripping the shirt off of people, making them run through the woods with a big ass log? I'm just trying to figure that out. But this family needs closure. Somebody knows something. The police claim that, you know, they're not hiding information. They're telling the family everything. There's nothing to hide. And that um, the same guy that was saying that, that, that he suspected foul play also later in another statement said that he's not ruling out foul play. And to me, that just seems like a sack of berries or something to just kind of quiet the family and cover his own tracks but the family is not buying this the family as well as everyone that comes across this story knows that something had to happen to Rasheem out there because if he has someone on the way to come pick him up and they had a disclosed location, then why would he stray off just to go take a hike in the woods and take his shirt off and run around with a big ass log? Knowing that he had already informed his family and the police department that he was fearing for his life. So if this young man was out here scared, fearing for his life, then more than likely he would have tried to stay in a well-populated area for his safety. Hence why he went in the Dollar General and to the little gas station. So what happened after Rasheem left that Dollar General? How did he wind up in those woods, shirtless, with a big log, which seems to be bruises on him. Something just don't seem right about this. And Taylorsville is really like 
10 minutes from a sundown town. So that area already has a bad rip when it comes to the black and white situation. You know what I'm saying? So this family is still waiting on the rest of the remains of Rasheen to be found, as well as answers, as well as someone needs to be arrested and held accountable for, for what happened to Rasheen Carter. I will do more on this case as we get into the who's, the what, the where's, and the why's in the next video. So I'll see y'all down in the comments. Please let me know what y'all think about this situation. My heart goes out to this family, Miss Tiffany Carter, and all the rest of his loved ones, his daughter, all the rest of his loved ones. I truly hate that this has happened to Rasheem and you all. And I know that y'all just want some type of closure as to who done this because nobody is buying the whole, the animals done it. Like nobody's buying that because somebody would have seen something. Somebody should have seen him making it from that store to that property unless he was driven there or something he was transported there by someone else to where people couldn't see him or if they did see him they just don't care because we already know what kind of town taylorsville is because it back in the in the day when it started happening it was so many troll pages came out and they were from People from Taylorsville, you know, letting the family know if they know what's best, don't come to Taylorsville with the protests. And, you know, they got on there and they was um, saying that he was a drug addict and playing on his mental, which the family quickly debunked that he was not mentally disabled, that he was not on any kind of drugs or anything, and that something just truly happened to him and according to the text in the phone conversations that his mother had with him prior to his disappearance does not sit easy on this lady's heart so again i'm sending my condolences out to this family and i will see y'all down in the comments this your girl money stacks signing out smooches peace